Hello and welcome back to another video. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you may well recognize this build I put together in the Fantex P500A. It was done in conjunction with CCL computers and was a full step-by-step -step build, guys. And if you haven't seen that video, you'll find a link to it in the description. So in this build, I decided to cool our i7 12700K with an air cooler from Bequat, the Dark Rock 4. But in the build guide, I did give you an option that if you wanted to go with a 360mm AIO, the one I would recommend would be the Silent Loop 2. So today I'm going to show you how to install this AIO in this particular build. And at the end of the video, I'm going to do a little bit of thermal testing and benchmarking to give you an idea of whether you should go with the air cooler or the AIO. Okay, let's get on with the installation. Okay, first thing for us to do is to remove the parts we're not going to need. So we're going to need to remove the air cooler and also the two fans at the top to make room for our AIO, which we're going to install at the top of this case. Because I've got a Z690 motherboard, we use the LGI 1700 kit from BeQuant to mount our cooler, and we're going to have to use exactly the same kit. The only slight difference is we're going to have to orientate these brackets. They're currently either side of the CPU. We're going to have to put one at the bottom and one at the top. So all we need to do is loosen the four screws, reposition the brackets, and then tighten it up again. Then we can go ahead and set our fans onto the radiator, making sure the cable is coming out at the back. Then we'll go ahead and secure the fans into place using the long radiator screws. In the box we've got a triple fan splitter cable. We can go ahead and plug each of the fans on the radiator into this. And then we're going to plug the other end into our CPU fan header. Taking a quick look at the cables coming from the pump, we've got a three pin cable, which we're going to plug into our pump fan header. And then we've got this three pin five volt RGB connector. We've got an extra one of these connectors coming from our cases hub, so we're just going to plug it into that. Okay, we can go ahead and set our AIO into the case and line it up with the top. And then we can go ahead and get things secured at the top using these shorter radiator screws. Next I'm going to bring all of our fan cables through to the back of the case and then we'll go ahead and bring the connector back through again and I'm just going to plug it into the CPU fan header which is this header here to the left hand side at the top of the case and then pull the excess cable through to the back. Next I just need to add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. Then we can go ahead and line our pump up with the bracket and then we'll get it secured into place with the screws at the top and bottom. Then we can go ahead and plug this 3-pin cable into our pump header and then we'll tuck the excess cable through to the back and we'll route this other cable with the ARGB again also through to the back. Okay, at the back of the case we have this spare ARGB connector which I'm just going to go ahead and plug the cable coming from our pump into. There we go, that's that connected up. Okay, so as you can see installation of the sound loop 2 was really straightforward. I think it looks great, but how does it affect the temperatures? So starting off with our idle temperatures, our CPU idled 11 degrees cooler with the AIO compared to the air cooler. And during the 10 minute idle 64 stability test, it was 16 degrees cooler. And as you would expect with the maximum temperature 78, there was no throttling when using the AIO. Our GPU temperatures were identical between the two systems. And in terms of noise, the AIO was actually four decibels quieter at idle and five decibels quieter under load. And I think a big part of the noise saving is we're using Be Quiet Silent Wings fans on the AIO, which are incredibly quiet, compared to the fans that come with the Fantex case, which are actually reasonably noisy. Okay, so changing the air cooler out for the AIO gives us a massive improvement in temperatures, 11 degrees saved at idle, and 16 degrees saved under load. But does that actually translate into any increased performance? So I reran two of our gaming benchmarks in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, our performance actually dropped by 2 frames per second with the AIO, while in Watch Dogs Legion it improved by 3 frames per second. So no significant difference to our gaming performance using the AIO compared to the air cooler, and in fact with the air cooler our temperature was in the 60s to the 70s throughout most of the gaming session, so it was nowhere near where it was going to throttle. 
So I was keen to see was there any difference under a more CPU intensive test. So I went for a Cinebench R23 and ran the multi-core test in both of the air cooler and the AIO. Again, in terms of temperatures, you can see both of them on your screen at the moment. The AIO, the CPU ran significantly cooler, similar to what we were getting with the Ida64 stability test, and there was no throttling at all noted with the AIO. But did that significant difference in temperatures translate to a benefit in performance? So with our air cooler, we had a multi-core score of 22,341, while with the AIO, we had a score of 22,398. So we did get an improvement in performance with the AIO, but it was only 0.3%. Okay, so putting all that together, what do I think you should go with with this particular CPU? Well, I think it depends what you're doing with your PC and what is important to you. If you're somebody who is obsessed with temperatures or uses your PC for CPU intensive tasks, or you want to overclock your CPU, then I would go with the AIO. If you're somebody who's using it mostly for gaming and are quite budget conscious, then I think the air cooler is gonna be absolutely fine for you and you're not gonna notice any difference in terms of performance. So summing up then, I think either option is fine, but if you're thinking of following this build guide, hopefully this video is gonna give you a little bit more information to decide on what color to go with. So hopefully you find the video useful. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.